How's it going, guys? I'm Mike. And I'm Stephanie. And we're Van Life Sheldon's Travels. Sheldon, he is right in his little pen over here. He's a yellow belly spider turtle yep. hanging out with us today. If you don't know, he travels all over the country with us. But Yes, we did bring him. And anytime we're out camping like this, we do set up that pen. And he's got a nice bucket of water. And it's all enclosed so he feels safe because... If we actually put him out here in the open, he'll just run and hide in something. So he's uh, very kind of skittish. Yeah, yeah, he's content in there. I think he feels safe, right? Yes, he's very content. All right, I'm just pulling this up on our phone yep. so we don't have to read it on, on Steph's phone here. Yeah. So we don't have to read touch it, the screen. touch the screen yeah, on you guys. Yeah, the comments get so crazy. But we do have a couple people coming on. We did want to say hi to everybody. Oh, yeah. hi, Craig. You made it on here. We're so glad. Good and Jay, we're nice to see you. Yes. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. We will tell you where we are later on. But um, you could see we're in a campsite, but you don't see the van. Right. Because we are camping at this campground, but our campsite doesn't have service which is kind of unfortunate because we got out the awning and the screen room and that would be really cool to show you guys we have service but we don't have enough yes. service to actually go live yes. oh cool there's a caterpillar on the on the uh, screen on the on the phone on the top but i just see doreen gone on here and a couple of other people i did hi want to craig show. and jay Will. Will. hey doreen how are you doing i i know it's kind of been hard i know that you're on lockdown and stores are limited and and we're just kind of checking in on you i guess that's what uh this kind of live stream is really the whole purpose of this live stream is just to check in with all yeah. of you and see what's going on yeah. with all of our subscribers because I know a lot of you don't actually comment a lot right. and that's okay we understand that some of you watch on TVs and other devices and everybody they make it hard to to uh, to comment and yeah and, and everybody seems to be on a different uh time schedule mm -hmm. hi danny because we know like if you're in new york or california you've kind of been quarantined a couple weeks longer than i think uh, some we have. couple right. people on the east coast like um florida's kind of now just starting to get locked down where california's been on lockdown for a couple of weeks so we just, you know, it's kind of like everybody's practicing social distancing and mm -hmm. I think we're kind of missing socializing. And so we kind of just wanted to give everybody the chance to come on here and say hi and tell us how you're doing. And, and we and miss all of you guys, Danny and Steven and Craig and Doreen and, and all you guys that watch us on a constant basis. It's just so great to actually be able to get to go, get to go live and interact with you guys. Okay, the stores. See, I don't. Even, I'm on a good little delay on on your phone on the AT and T. We are running this on. Can someone let us know? Sorry, there's some bugs. Um, how's the quality? Cause I'm seeing it pretty good quality here, but I just want to just check to see how's it. So Doreen says the stores are finally getting in some supplies. Still yes. low, but we did get some groceries. Oh, that's great. That's really good. I'm still on lockdown and trying to follow the rules. Well, yeah. that's kind of us. We wanted to, you know, after we said hi to everyone and some more people got mm -hmm. on here, we wanted to kind of tell you what we've done and and uh, I know some of you are worried that we came from Mardi Gras yeah, and this and, it, and that. Yeah, it is kind and... of really unfortunate that the last big um, event that we went to that was, you know, a real party scene is just so happens to be like the epic center of this virus so that's right. that's really unfortunate but mike and mike and i feel great and there were some precautions that we were taking not because we knew about the virus back in february because mardi gras was february 25th and so we were there about a week before that and when we went there we came from florida and we have a sam's membership so we fully stocked up and then we went there and we knew we were going to be going to Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras is like a town where you drink and when when in Rome we do drinks um uh, oftentimes 
just and to, things you know, like socially, that. Yeah. To, to be out there yeah, and enjoy nothing ourselves. too crazy. So when we went to Sam's Club, we actually got um, a pretty good deal on some box wine and some margarita mix. So when we were walking around, we were actually walking around with our own cups, and we were thinking that's probably what saved us because we, we weren't going in. <laughs> into the crowded bars because i'm not much of a crowd person anyway so if you're if we go to a crowded bar like on bourbon street and we could hear the music from outside we would just stand outside right. so i know there's been a lot of concerns like we've kind of had some comments and they're like you know consider yourself like you got the corona but we were taking precautions kind of already just because you know you're you are in a crowded city and, and, and if anybody too, knows so about new orleans you kind of know that it's kind of known for being a little grimy and a little dirty right and and our budget really didn't we decided to go to key west mm -hmm. instead and kind of skimp a little bit on the eating out part yeah. of new orleans for mardi gras and considering it was going to be so busy anyway Hey, Tim Untethered. How you doing? Yeah, it's been a long time uh, that way since we talked to you. Nah, I did guess I didn't turn off certain things. Here. Sorry, guys. I thought I had all this undone. Oh, sorry, guys. It's all been right. such a long time since we've been live. Right. Um, hey, hey. But we, we decided that we would stock up, like Steph said, and get a bunch of food and cook every night. So mm -hmm. it, a lot of times we would go to the parade and then we would come back to the fan and just mm -hmm. kind of hang out and uh, Steph would cook dinner. We'd make us some drinks and we'd kind of go walk around. And like you said, we really did mm -hmm. kind of stay outside the bars and yeah. everything. Um, and the real reason we left right after Mardi Gras, we stayed till uh, a few days after and we enjoyed some time with our friend uh, Pierre yes. from Heat Sinker Bus. And we went out that weekend, the last mm -hmm. week, you know, the weekend after Mardi Gras. But unfortunately, if you don't watch his channel, his, uh, his, the same place that we were parked, the road we were parked on, his bus got broken into. And um, his e-bike and, and his generator and a bunch of other things were stolen out of his RV. And we had had some weird little knocks on our van and people, what I kind of thought would be, kind of scope in the van a little bit we can see them in the surveillance we had a guy knock on the door one day i guess to see if we were in there and if not maybe he would have broke in you, you just don't know yeah but especially in new orleans where it happens so it happens often. so often so after he got broken into we decided the next day that we would just head on out of new orleans we had seen New Orleans. We had seen Mardi Gras and enjoyed it. Thanks, and Patrick, for dropping in. He says he's got to run. Good deal. And we, we kind of thought we would just head to the coast. And it was supposed to be nice and warm for a few days. Yeah. So we, we wanted to go hit the beach. So we backtracked just the weekend after Mardi Gras right to the Mississippi coast. Yeah. And we kind of boondocked. And I, those are the videos you're going to start to see after this uh, live stream is us boondocking right on the water and being able to go across yeah, the street and hang we, out. Yeah, because we did and... like Gulfport, Mississippi mm -hmm. and Biloxi, Mississippi. And actually when we were in Mississippi, that's when everything kind of started to shut down in New Orleans, like right. Bourbon Street kind of just started to shut down. And, and then, then the, uh, they started really talking about the coronavirus yeah. on TV. And while we were in Biloxi, Mississippi, they actually started to shut down all the casinos, mm -hmm. which is funny because one of our waitress was like, well, while you're here in Biloxi, you should check out the the casinos and then the very next day they were shutting they them down shut. so we so, decided to go up to a place up in the uh, national was the DeSoto National Forest yeah it was a POW camp and you're gonna see a video yes. of that it, it was uh, an old World War II German POW camp where they took prisoners German mm -hmm. prisoners to and now it's um, a uh, national forest campground mm -hmm. and we had enough provisions to stay a whole week and we stayed from uh, Sunday morning until Friday, and we went into town and got a few more supplies, and then we came back to uh, yeah. the campground and spent Friday night, Saturday morning, all day, and that's when we seen a ranger in the morning, and then eventually got kicked out on uh, Saturday night, 
the ranger just came right. about five and was just so like, ever since we've heard guys. about the virus we've really distanced ourselves from mm -hmm. the city and large crowds and people and so we don't we did a week out there and yeah. then we we decided once we left there we d you did see us go to the gym and then those three videos were over of one day we made a mad dash here mm -hmm. to the mid um i would say the north central part of Florida, and we are staying on some private land. Mm -hmm. We stayed here, thank goodness. Uh, Summer and Chris were very, very nice to get a hold of us. If you don't know this story, we'll kind of redo it here a little bit. Right. And we made some videos of the Itchituckney's, uh Springs Campground, mm -hmm. and it they wasn't were, too long ago, no, so you they, might remember the video. They were very, uh, Chris and Summer were nice enough mm -hmm. when we were coming down into Florida to get a hold of us. We were on a delay, so when we were coming back up out from the Keys, we got a hold of them. We ended up staying here like eight, nine days, Yeah, and it was we, so <laughs> nice and beautiful. It's, and, it's like family here. It was so funny. We were going to only stay two days and leave out on Saturday, and they were like, well, Saturday we plan to have a bonfire, so you should really leave out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to stay till Sunday, and we kept pushing it back <laughs> so much so that we had to make a mad dash to get to Mardi Gras. Right, so we left on Wednesday, and we stopped and saw uh, our prepper Wayne, yes, and, and then we nice made our way to New time. Orleans in like two days, and that was fine. Yeah, And we thought we were going to keep pushing uh, mm -hmm. West and kind of go up and and be kind of poised to be in the Colorado area during the summertime so we could get some elevation Definitely. and and hit some more national parks and in in that area until the weather kind of needed us to go up in elevation but it's as soon as we found out this stuff and then some of our friends were on a lot of Facebook groups mm -hmm. and a lot of people um, we have a friend Laura that was in LA and she, I don't know if LA or on the outskirts in California. And basically she called the police department and asked, what do we need to do? What do I need to do? And they said, we're not issuing any parking tickets. Just stay put, stay where you're at in your van. But we didn't want to get trapped in Biloxi or Mobile, Alabama. What we were or... really kind of scared of is when we were in Mississippi, um, Utah made this thing where they didn't they weren't welcoming non-residents and so it was kind of at that time where states were making up their own rules and then other states seemed to be following the rules that were kind of made up so we were really scared about like our state's gonna follow that and be and not welcome non-residents so that's when we made a mad dash to Florida which is kind of funny because now when you're coming into Florida they're actually thinking about putting up at the welcoming centers and all the borders to get into Florida they're thinking about putting up like um, temporary yeah. hospitals that you would drive points. through yeah, right. and they would test everybody coming into Florida for coronavirus. And we've actually been getting a lot of comments asking if we're going to get tested. Um, no, there's a limited amount of tests uh, that we know of because of the news. And we're not going to go into any hospitals or doctor's offices unless we have to. And even if, like, you know, knock on wood, if we feel symptoms, we would still want to, like, talk to the doctor via, like, Skype or something on the phone just so that we wouldn't have to go into those office. And we, I didn't realize, Doreen, that you were working in the hospitals. Thank you so much for your oh, sacrifices wow. yes. and your service. Her and her husband, actually. So thank you both. You guys are so awesome. And, and to anybody, I know you might know a nurse or anybody, just, you know, thank them or make them a hot tea or sandwich or something because they're really, really working overtime. Exactly. Yeah, and this is... You know, any doctor, new, right? any yeah. doctor who is, you know, working just for the money, they're they're working for the people now. They're working for the people now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just want to say, you know, we 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 were out between the POW camp and New Orleans for a week, and then we stayed at the POW camp for another week. So that was two weeks, and then we have made a mad dash here over mm -hmm. a day. And then we've been here a week. Mm -hmm. So we have been out of New Orleans for three weeks now. 
and don't have any symptoms yeah. and don't feel anything. It was, so that's kind of really good in it, our eyes. And it kind of, you know, makes us a little, like, you know, we kind of aren't real happy that New Orleans, um, Mardi Gras is becoming like the epic center because now we're like thinking about like everything we did there and like did we take all the precautions we could take and right. then even like going to the parades and like getting all the things that we got at the parades like Ooh, the like, free throws throw that away yeah and... because like already i kind of already washed everything just because you know it is a parade it is public things and then it was like mike said you know we've already washed it you know you washed it twice because after i found out you know new orleans was getting high Washed in numbers times, I, right yeah just definitely go back and rewash it but then like all the necklaces and stuff they've been sealed in a bag since then so it's been like three weeks and they say it can only last a couple of days on plastic and it's been sealed in that bag so it hasn't been transferring anywhere Anything. if it was to be on there knock right. on wood so we've been here a week i know i'm getting uh, you know putting out the videos uh, every day here our internet service is pretty limited where the camp, our camp is, mm -hmm. but this is a working campground, mm -hmm. but we have, um, thank goodness we know the owners and they've been nice enough to when we asked, could we come back here and stay for a little while? They just said, you're welcome and your family and come on back and, and, and take <laughs> a spot and, and. We're, we're just using a spot without any electricity or water because we have our solar and we can get water from the other um, the other sites. Mm -hmm. They do have showers here and they are bleaching them down every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of nice to have access and to water it and It is a hot really nice to be and... out here and I'm kind of glad that um, places like this aren't closing down because really it's saving people like us but also like if you're you know like a family and you're kind of quarantined in your house this is really nice because these campsites are spaced out definitely more right. than six feet apart and so you could come out here and you could walk around and you don't feel like the, you, cabin, fever. the cabin fever because yeah. you're still out here and you could still you know take a little hike or like jump in the water or something like that yeah they do have uh, i'm not sure how many sites they have pay uh electric and water sites and they also have just primitive sites all mm -hmm. come with a picnic table and a fire ring uh, they go from the primitive is 22 and some change, mm -hmm. and the electric is almost 20, uh, 45 for a night. Mm -hmm. And But you do have access to a lot of other things. The state park at the time right now is kind of closed. Yeah, but, which is uh, unfortunate because it is literally right, right next, next door <laughs> to the Itchitutney State Park when it has really nice springs there. You could float on the water and that's really great. So it is kind of unfortunate that places like some some state parks are closed. I understand that some are open and allowing free emissions, so that's interesting. But we've kind of quarantined ourselves a little bit here at the campground. Like I said, we've been here a week now, mm -hmm. uh, six days. Oh wow, oh, wow Steven, Steven, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate that super chat, man. Uh, we, something to help for gas that's yeah so nice. this one's on a little line we haven't even seen it on that yet and groceries and thank you so much thank I, you we, Steven. we were kind we of really planning on that. just kind of moving slowly guys you yeah. know and finding campsites and free camping and and doing a daily blog out of new orleans and we kind of wanted to backtrack and our plan was to kind of go straight up and uh through mississippi and alabama hit tennessee come see some of the people that we had talked to and before the coronavirus yeah. and and um, visit them and end up in Kentucky Definitely. and then make our way up and then kind of making a like a you know circle around to the Colorado area and follow the weather going up and and just kind of enjoy the East Coast a little bit this year yeah. since we we did California and, and Arizona and Oregon and Washington the last couple of years and Utah and so we thought we'd just do a little bit you know but moving very quickly deplete some funds really fast because we did do about 500 miles didn't we uh to get from the mississippi to here and like i said we're just so fortunate to to have such great friends to allow yeah. us to do this and, and without without this i, I don't know what 
there's a lot of people that offered a lot of yes. things and I'm sure we would figure it out and, and all of that, but it just, this made it really easy to have our own space here. Um, in case this goes on yeah. for longer, cause we're thinking we're going to have to be here. People are saying another two weeks minimum, yeah. and I don't want to hold anything to that we'll see what it looks like and in two weeks we're right? not trying and... to get on anybody's nerves because um i guess there are no laws saying that you can't travel out of states right now but you know Do every right thing. Yeah, yeah we're trying to do the right thing by sitting still because you know like they're trying to close down big cities and things like that so you do have law enforcement out there trying to curve people away around these big cities and things like that and we know that they're not appreciating travel right now extra ex stuff that they especially have to worry if it's about. not necessary so we're definitely trying to stay off the road as long as we can until stuff starts opening up but i do want to go back to about the connections we made on youtube and like uh, you know, YouTube is known for not, not paying a lot of people, but the best thing about YouTube is you guys and, right. the, and the people we meet and the connections we make, not only because, like, they're allowing us to stay at this place, but we There's really, so like, yeah, things. and we really enjoy talking to you and getting to know you. Like, when we were going live, I was excited because there, we get the chance to interact and right. there's so many times like you guys have been on us and we've been trying to go live and it's just, you know, it wasn't working and we've had problems in the past going live. So I'm really glad this one's working this one's out working and good. all you are here to experience this with us because it is fun we're to all in this together, interact. Right? Yeah. And we're all in this, this, this right. time, this crucial time together. And, and that's something I really want to reiterate that we are all in this together definitely. and, uh, We've been in contact with all of our other Nomad YouTube friends mm -hmm. and non-YouTube friends all across the country. And and people are reporting in all kinds of stuff, you know, in Washington, $500 fines if they catch okay. you on the roads. To, Let me see if to, I can get Sheldon for a little bit. Because Danny was asking. Yeah, yeah we, did, we did bring him. We did bring him. Uh, this is not our campsite um, here. We did, we are kind of away from everyone else here in this camp so that no we don't bother anybody um we are kind of working here so that's kind of uh um they've kind of given us a couple things to do and we'll just take care of those things and so we're we're officially workers here now in case the uh you know anything happens we have a safe place to stay and we kind of plan on being here for a couple of weeks, guys. Uh, I don't know if I can see him. I don't think so. Yeah, right uh, Doreen uh, was saying that she has to have a note to travel to work. A lot of places are like that, like yes. Chicago and the big cities are like that. And so we're not trying to get in a situation where we feel stuck. So that's right. why we went ahead early on when the, the virus was really starting to spread. And we were like, okay, where can we stay for a while and just stay put, stay put and be safe and not be in a crowded area around people. And this, you know, this campground is still open. Um, <laughs> and I encourage anybody in the area that needs a place to stay that this place is open and they are accepting, uh, reserve, you know, campers so i would hope that if you're coming through the florida panhandle here and you're either leaving or coming through florida and you need a nice safe place to stay they have plenty of camp spots open yeah. here and we recommend this place i mean there's a lot of place you if you watch the channel you know we don't really stay at campgrounds and this is about the only campground that we really endorse so uh I think it's a really, really good stopping off point if you're coming in and out of Florida. And we're going to be here for a couple of weeks, guys. So if you want to stop in and say hi, we'll probably keep our distance and everything. So we're not really encouraging a meetup or anything like that. But we were kind of talking about something after all of this is over that we should have Definitely. some kind of meetup or something so yeah. we'll, we'll keep that on the back yeah. burner because uh you know we're gonna be and this thing is gonna happen i know a lot of people are saying 
longer than two weeks, but we're, we're kind of planning two weeks and then we'll see what happens after that and, and kind of assess the situation. Mm -hmm. If we need to stay here a month, we'll stay here a month. We'll, we'll do whatever we need to do. And uh, they've, they've basically said that we could stay as long as we need to. And uh, we don't want to take advantage of any opportunities or anything. But at the same time, right now, this is the safest thing for us and for everyone. And just like everyone says, stay home. And, and we're going to try to start um, after this live stream. I'm kind of lucky that I have some more Mardi Gras videos. Mm -hmm. I have some videos of us at the beach. I have some videos of us at the POW camp mm -hmm. and all of that um, that I'll be able to put together after this. And oh, look. Aw. Summer's on here. Yeah, hey, summer. summer's on here. And we'll, you know, we're going to be able to still keep making videos. I'm probably going to do one awesome. every other day um, starting probably Monday. I'll probably take tomorrow off. And Monday, we'll start with videos of Mardi Gras and start making our way this way. And once we get here again, then we'll, um, we'll kind of we'll start just doing some stuff around the camp here, showing you what we're doing. Yeah. I'm going to continue to keep filming. So. And I know uh, a couple of people have asked us if we could do an updated tour video, yep. so that will definitely be That's coming. That's definitely happening um, while we, we're here. We do want to put more lights in the van because mm -hmm. it kind of is a little dark in there, so mm -hmm. more like electrical video will be coming up. So we'll, we will um, kind of be doing a little bit different content because we are sitting still, but we will definitely still be making videos and posting. Um, it was nice yesterday. Steph went to another spring here in the area. I stayed back and made that video for you guys, and Steph went out on the springs all day, which was really nice. Uh, and film it. You, actually, you have to have a... Uh, permission from them to film yeah, and, and all I was this invited and... with other campers so it was kind of like a spur of the moment like just get your stuff and go and so we didn't exactly have time to, to get everything geared up and and, and ask uh, for permission ask and everything so that was something that. that um I enjoyed without the camera which is kind of nice because uh, it is interesting right? and it is interesting because now when we go somewhere Mike and I are like oh we should have got that on film and that was a good shot right. and so it is interesting because when we don't have the camera it's like we wish we would have the camera but it was nice that you got to go and have some girl time and just enjoy being you know do something different for the day yeah, and not definitely. have to worry about filming Destination hi, Scott open and Terry. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Hi, everyone. Yeah. Definitely say hi to Scott and Terry because Terry has been awesome. She's been helping um, make masks for the ladies in Washington because, you know, it's hugely spreading. So definitely is Terry is definitely helping out as much as she can. And Scotty's back to work. Bless his heart. So we that's, talk to them on a regular basis. That's always hard going really from, nice. yeah, yeah, that's always hard going from traveling every day to then getting back in the work groove. So <sighs> definitely say hi to them because it's a, it's been a tough change for all for of us. For all of us, you know, I, I've noticed a lot of, uh, of YouTubers are starting to make more videos and then there's a lot of YouTubers that are kind of mm -hmm. scaling back on their on their videos and and keep supporting them even though go back and watch some of their older stuff just because that's that's how we all make our little dime I guess you could say <laughs> Dorian said check the kayak next time it is actually funny last time uh, Summer gave us some kayaks from here, and it had a hole in it, so it made a good video. It made a great video. Mike sank, but it was actually funny because we were walking past the kayaks yesterday, and uh, we were thinking, why we're here for board, we might actually go up to our storage unit and clean that out. And we have two kayaks in there. Right. I was like, maybe we should just donate the two kayaks <laughs> that we, we have. What are we doing with them, yeah. right? Like, but uh, we kind of maybe thought after a couple of weeks here before. Uh, we didn't clean out our storage unit and we kind of really wish we would have and it's fifty dollars a month and maybe we get something that's a little smaller or cheaper we literally have like five uh rubber made totes is mm -hmm. all we have in there and if we could I just i wish we could get rid of that but i really mm -hmm. just if we had a bigger van we could almost put all that stuff in a bigger van right or, but or if we had a tow vehicle or something like that but 
I'm thinking now that we're this close to, to the storage, we might head back after a couple of weeks of staying here. We might jet to Tampa and, and clear out our storage unit and, and just kind of be done with it. And and I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe get a smaller one. I, 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 may, I haven't decided. We might just get rid of everything, guys. So who knows? We might buy a bigger van and start decking it out while we're in quarantine if all this goes too long, right? You can't <laughs> don't ever make tell. promises. <laughs> Yeah. You notice, you, you notice we gave the one with the hole in it to me. Yeah, you would have never. I would if I would have looked over that boat. I would have never seen the hole, and I made sure that I put the little uh, screw in cap in there and everything. And it wasn't even like one of the oldest boats either. That was one of the newer ones, which was kind of funny. Uh, there's a little story behind that, and, and I know I didn't explain it really all in the in the video, but we might as well, we got a few minutes here. Uh, basically, it was, we were here almost like three or four days, and mm -hmm. we could have went out on the water. Don would have took us, no problem, he used the kayak, but we were lazy. I'm not going to lie, we were hanging out just mm -hmm. enjoying being here after being on the road and coming up from the Keys and, and everything, just being in a campground. <laughs> And we decided on a Saturday morning when there was a whole group of other people here that the only busy day, Saturday, we want to go kayaking, of course. So we go up there and of course they're busy. So they have them all booked up and, and Summer and, and Don, they just, they, they thought, well, we've got these extra ones that we've never really, we don't rent those out anymore but they're extras and if you want to get on the water today because that day was the nicest day it was a little mm -hmm. gloomy uh before and then it was going to be a gloomy the next couple of days so we were like you know what we'll take our chances and we'll get out on the water and enjoy a saturday and that's you know like they don't normally use those two but that works you know it was fun i enjoyed going out on those springs and uh Wish it was still open so that we could go again, but... Uh, yeah, it would be definitely nice to swim, because as you can tell, I'm wearing one of these, because it, it was hot today. It was 90 here in Florida. Over 90. So, yeah. yeah, 90 plus. But there is a cold front coming in, so that that is definitely nice. You know, it, it, it's a little warm, and you know we don't have uh, air conditioning in the van except for when we run the van, so... It kind of makes it, even if we had uh, full hookups here, we couldn't run an air conditioning. We'd have to still run the van for our air conditioning. So it works. Yeah. We are doing fine. We I charge, I run the van for like an hour a day. And with that and the little bit of sun we get, we've been doing pretty good now for yeah. a week, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, but Summer said, thanks for testing it for us anytime. <laughs> But it made for a good video, and I'm sure, you know, everybody, I wish I would have had a little bit of Terrebonne tape or something with me when I was But it was out funny there. because uh, it ended up being a bag of Jolly Ranchers that, that saved the saved day. That saved the day, so, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it worked. How long have we been on here, guys? About 30 minutes. Well, that's not too bad. I was thinking we'd go an hour. Uh, let's see. So, Danny, are you still driving? Uh, are you, where are you at since you're normally in a truck driving? I'm glad to see that I, uh, Scott and Terry, you guys haven't decided to uh, go in the middle of nowhere without any cell phone service. So, we love you too, Danny. Or, <laughs> no, I'm getting mixed up. We love you too, Danny, and we also love you too, Janice. Um, Doreen. There was so many turtles uh, on that on that tour on the boat ride. That was the nicest part, is to see all the turtles and stuff. So, did you want to talk about some of those comments? Yeah, we can talk about some of those comments. So, with this virus, we know everybody's kind of they questions for us, and we actually took pictures about some of these comments um, that we wanted to talk about. Okay. Seeing how the changes are affecting you has been interesting in the sense that we aren't facing what you are. What you go through, what you see, what you share with us is important. How other areas are reacting is of interest. Be safe. And we don't, 
I, I guess we're starting to realize that what we put out there is kind of news also, right? And it's uh, informative and people are, are using this information now that we have such a, a bigger platform here to, to take that information out. And I never really thought about when we were talking about the, the rest areas being closed or this being open and this being closed or or this bathroom is handicap accessible or this gym or handicap accessible or you could get to the water in a wheelchair or all those little things people watch and use that knowledge to decide if they can go to places and I'm hoping that by us coming back to where is close to home to where we could be the safest on private property is what we should be doing and we're encouraging everyone to stay home definitely we, stay safe we don't want to be like and, the spring breakers where everybody's like oh they're so awful right they were they they got shut down the the government the governor of florida was like we'll shut down the beaches monday so they did have that weekend so they so when they were partying on the beach that weekend, they weren't breaking any rules. But, but they were breaking like social rules just to help social the distancing, distancing rules yeah. to help this kind. Of, and we don't know how long all this is going to last. No. But, but that is that's when like it was like, man, this is serious. They're closing the beaches on spring break in Florida, Florida. and it's crazy because it's like it's nice weather out there, and everything shut down. Like if you're in Florida, you're kind of used to a hurricane. So you're used to like uh, sometimes it would be nice weather and things are shut down because a hurricane just came through. But it, it's kind of weird that everything is functional and everything works, but everything shut down. It is strange times. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate this. Uh, Summer here, the the owner of the campground we're staying at, has said uh, we have invited any truck driver that is driving a truck and needs a place to camp they can camp here for free for the night um and have a place to park so they have a huge field it's access right off of the end it's pretty close off the interstate if they need yeah. a place she's opened the doors to uh to this place if you need a spot yeah. please get a hold of me van life sheldon's travels on gmail leave a comment on this steph's been doing really good about keeping up with the comments here we do have like i said we're not in our campsite because we're all the way up into another campsite that's closer to the road that mm -hmm. is allowing us to get 5G service. And I was able to get like two up on the, uh, and I knew that was enough to get a good live stream. Mm -hmm. We don't have that down at our, um, at our spot. So, but that's fine because we're kind yeah. of away from everybody and that's what we yeah. should be with the travelers coming in and out of here. Definitely. We want to limit our access to everyone and that's, yeah. that's really good. But like I said, if you're coming through the panhandle or the, you know, through, we're right here above mm -hmm. Fort White in Florida. And if you would like to stop in, she says you're free to stay. So please stop in and say hi on your way through yeah. if you need a spot. So. Hi Paula, Hi, thanks Paula for coming Jackson. on here. And Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, Robert. Hi from Ohio. Um, Craig, and okay, let's make sure we ain't haven't missed anybody. Janice, I love you guys. Thank you so much. And this is the reason we make these videos is because of the people that we get to meet. It's definitely not the money guys. Cause we don't make a lot of money on YouTube, but the what you, the interactions the, and the people and is, the friendships you make, you know, the priceless. friendships are, you know, lifelong friendships because everybody you meet through YouTube who watches you, they like you because they like doing the same things you're doing, or they are doing the same things you doing, or they have the same camper. And there is some similarity that brings us together. So it's so amazing to find so many people who are just like us. And that's what we are truly blessed about YouTube is the connections and the people that we get to meet because it is, you know, it's always like, it's always nice to do something yourself, but it is kind of nice when you have friends to share it with too. It is. And, uh, 
I know there's a small group kind of isolated up in uh, in Arizona. I hope they're doing okay. You know who you are, and and we have friends all over the place. And that's the craziest thing is when this happened, we sent the word out, and instantly we had all kinds of offers. So, all right, I just want I yeah, seen we that. Wish I you wanted were in to. Yeah, we Florida too, Danny. All right, did you want to do another one? Seeing how the changes are affecting. You just read that one. <laughs> um, someone asked if we use a what kind of camera we use. I use a DJI Osmos Pocket, so uh, with a microphone. Uh, we should have brought it because we're not using. Yeah, we're it not right using now. it. I'm actually using my phone. I think it's good that you share what's going on out on the road right now and keep it interesting with your banter. Good video and thanks for sharing. Uh, let's see if we can find something that's a little bit. We've had a lot of people telling us uh, about what their situations are. I know. Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. My relatives in Florida are concerned that so many people heading to Florida are already here due to snowbirds. Well, with the virus attacking people, they feel it would put a strain on healthcare facilities and staff. What are your thoughts? And uh, that's kind of one of the reasons we wanted to come back to our home state is so that we, I know a lot of places, and I know it's terrible to say, but a lot of towns in Colorado and all across the country are saying, you know, if you don't live here, you, you need to hunker down, but you can't stay here. And mm -hmm. you, if you don't live here, we don't want you using our resources. We don't want you shopping in our stores and taking away from our food and our and our supplies and i understand that i, I kind of do they want to keep a locals local and keep everything local and 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 that protects their communities but we're travelers and we don't have a home base and that's uh and for people that are snowbirds a lot of them have uh, you know, a home here yeah. and a home somewhere else. And that somewhere else may be like Chicago. Where it snows. And, so and for us to say anything about snowbirds is really hard because if I, w if I had two residents and one was in Chicago and one was in Florida during this epic center. I'd want to be in my Florida house yes. during the summer. So I can't say that everybody should stay where they, because Florida, you know, there are some big cities, but then it is rural like this and you can stay out in areas like this. So if you know somebody who has a piece of land or something like that, it is nice where you can be somewhere where you could still be outside and spread out and i'd almost rather suggest that any time over than trying to be in the city and, and really being quarantined be really being quarantined because out here we can go into town once a week get a few things and then come right back and mm -hmm. and uh you went into town with uh it's it's kind of a cool story about this place uh um we stayed here and we made a few videos mm -hmm. and then one of our subscribers you know who you you are they are now one of the camp hosts here she decided to come here and spend the night mm -hmm. spent the second night and now she's been here a couple of weeks yeah. and she's working here now so um that's the kind of place this is and uh, to be around good people uh, is it means something and and that's i think that's what all of this is really about is to we're here and we're safe and there's plenty of room to stretch out and there's 20 acres here if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and uh there is um eight campers here if i'm not wrong at the moment plus the people that work here so we might have 15 people in this whole campground and everyone is within the campsites are almost a football field apart so it's there they take we take all precautions here so you have to do those little things and isolating ourselves for the next couple of weeks then we'll see what happens out here yeah and what's we going really on. don't want to start traveling until stuff starts opening up mm -hmm. now we know there has been a rumor date out there that it's going to start opening by christmas or not by christmas 
since it's so long away. Hopefully, hopefully way before then. But they're saying that it should open by Easter. And things should start opening by Easter. And we talked to some campers here. And they were uh, high schoolers. And they were going back to school on April 15th. So things are going to start opening up around us as soon as April 15th. So when we get to that time, we'll adjust we'll about... We'll adjust and figure out what we're going to do, you know? Right. But I think as long as major cities are still on lockdown, we'll, we probably won't be traveling. And if we do, we want to travel in rural areas just like this. Scott and Terry are getting off here. Thanks, guys, for stopping yeah, in our live stream. Thank you we so miss much. you guys and love you. Stay so, oh, safe. Stay safe, and we'll talk after after the live in a few days i'm sure so we always keep in touch but yeah love you guys but i i think that's just the best thing to do is just to we're gonna start doing a little bit more of these lives now that i know that they're the work you know here which is really nice because mm -hmm. we can do a few lives but yeah definitely um I, I don't really know what else we could talk about do you Oh, uh, we just, we want to remind everybody that, you know, this too shall pass. This too shall pass it is and we an, will be back. Yes, this is a new kind of venture, a new way of living. But I do think that things will go back to, to normal because, you know, there's a lot of people missing the chance to go to a restaurant and socialize or just go to a bar and have drinks or, you know, even like just hanging out on the river and not feeling like, you know, you're being shameful because you're outside having fun. Oh, oh something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, Pierre from uh, Heat Sinker Bus. Obviously, he had his bus broken into and in New Orleans. He's also traveling with someone that has a bus called William the Schoolie. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I'm not going to say his name in case he doesn't want it put out there like that. But uh, oh. they're traveling, and they're both Canadians. And they had uh, six weeks left uh, two yeah. weeks ago. So yeah. on, their, on their, you know, their stay here, and they're basically doing they're in huge buses and uh we had to leave them in in alabama mississippi and they were basically only able to stay at a place one two nights and i'm wondering i need to reach out to them tonight and see what's going on and how they are because you know they were supposed to be making their way north to cross the border back into canada to go home and now all of this has happened and everything. So yeah. I know it's affecting a lot of snowbirds that are wanting to go back home to Canada. I know it's affecting a lot of people. Uh, the, From what I understand, and if any of you know, if you're over there by Algodonas, and if you're over there by, um, by the Mexican border, if you're able to go over to Algodonas now because... A lot of people were having dental work after mm -hmm. the RTR and cord site and going with the slabs and, yeah. and touring with everyone. Definitely. And we can't yeah. blame them. We've done it before. We've done it ourselves. We've had dental work there. So after yeah, the season's so kind of over, a lot of people kind of jet over the border there in Mexico to get some work done. And um, that, in turn, is kind of, from my understanding, stopped. Um Steph, on the other hand, I guess we should talk about this. Next month kind of needs a uh, a birth control shot that yeah. she normally gets, you and know, we, every three months. And and we bought that in Mexico before, mm -hmm. and we were thinking about getting a shot and having someone in Mexico purchase it and, and mail it to us. And I've given her a couple of shots from Mexico when we were mm -hmm. there last year, yeah. and they work great, same thing. And right. But now that option's off the table, right. and and having to go into the hospitals and stuff is in doctor's offices right now isn't really what you want to be doing so having to get those things organized and stuff is yeah. is i'm sure what well, everyone else is dealing with too we'll right? just have to see how it goes because in here in florida they are saying they're trying to separate the coronaviruses so that if you need something done just simple like me going in for a depot shot you shouldn't have to 
expose yourself to the corona victims just because you're going there so hopefully by then we have it straighten it up but if not i will just call the doctor and see if i could get like a script sent out somehow and just go into um a pharmacy and buy it so i don't have to go into the office but like we said we haven't done much research on that because haven't had to worry about it, right? And things are yeah. changing day to day. They are. So, yeah. and that's something else. We just kind of, I'm kind of glad we have a little bit of content to be able to put out um, that we do run on a little delay because, you know, kind of, what would we put out if you're not traveling? So, we'd figure something out. Steph makes some pretty good dinner every night. And even if we just showed you what we had for dinner, I'm sure... Uh, yeah. That would be interesting, but I hate to say it, but uh, Craig, you're right. Um, uh, besides any goods, you can't really cross the border, and I don't know, maybe I, oh, that's what they Craig wanted. said. If they get to the Canadian US border, they can go home. So, oh, so okay. they can't go home. See, I don't know okay. enough about that to talk about it or, or whatever, and I really didn't want to get into it, but you know, they, they were a little worried. Uh, I uh, Cheryl says she gets her meds mailed out. Uh, someone says even Dave's RV life has to go back to Pennsylvania. Really, I I, I talked to Dave the other day over text message, and he was, um, I think, two hours south of us. So I'm not sure what his plans are, but we had kind of wanted to meet up when we were on yeah. the coast of Mississippi, and then all of this coronavirus stuff, so we kind of decided... We went up to the POW camp while he was at his subscriber's house, and then he went on to Florida here, and we didn't know where we were headed. But now we're we're about uh, two hours uh, north of him, and we are about four hour, three or four hours north of Linda, Linda, Linda. So uh, she's uh, a couple, about three or four hours south of us. do cooking videos with Steph. Yeah, I mean, she last, a couple nights ago, we've, we've had some really good dinners. We've been, uh, it's been nice to be out in one place where we mm. could actually cook and have a nice dinner and stuff, so. Yeah, I do enjoy that. Mike really likes to go out and eat, but because I've worked in a restaurant, I really appreciate making my own food. And it, it is funny because I, I'm a quiet person and Mike is like Abby on NCIS. He has to have his phone going, he has to have the TV going. So it is funny because I do like to be in the van and I like to have everything turned off because in the restaurant I feel like that's what you're listening to during dinner. You're just hearing all the dishes and all the conversations and, and there's so much going around you. It's I don't enjoy being in a restaurant. Mike enjoys being in a restaurant. Steph likes a home cooked meal. Uh, uh, any day. Any day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nomad Honda says that they could cross the border. As long as they uh, they've asked them to contain them, kind of quarantine themselves for fourteen days, so it's that that's understandable. Um, yeah, so they will have to quarantine themselves if they cross the border. So that that is interesting. And I kind of feel like we've kind of we've kind of quarantined ourselves with limited exposure for almost three weeks now since New Orleans. But we're gonna stick here. We have enough supplies for at least another week and a half. We might end up having to go in and get some food in about a week and a half. We'll assess that and see what's going on. But uh, I really think with all the dried pasta and rice, oh we could probably stay longer. out for like a month I if know, we really right? stretched our sources. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go in and just snag some milk like you did the other day. Um, the camp, uh, the lady, one of our subscribers was here and, and mm -hmm. she was heading into town just to get something from the Dollar General and some fuel, I think. And, yeah. And you rode with her. And, yeah, she was nice enough to give me a ride up there. And we got some little, you know, some milk and one more little meal, you there know. There is, um, the stores are stocked here. It is kind of interesting because they got a lot of freezers and they got half of them stocked. So it looks stocked and then the other ones are empty. So they didn't want their shelves to look uh, weak. So they pushed there, it all yeah. together. But going through the stores even here in this rural area you do see like one loaf of bread per household 
one gallon of milk per household. So it is interesting because even way out here in this rural area, like we're about an hour from anything, even way out here, they're still limiting stuff because, you know, even even the stores are going low on stuff and and that's um, what thir- it's like 35 minutes to a Walmart, uh an hour to a Sam's or a Costco. So, yeah, we're we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. I wouldn't say too much but enough you know thanks danny for stopping and i see you gotta go appreciate it danny i hope we cross paths yeah definitely mary (laughs) i hear sheldon over there climbing around (laughs) the neighbor's about a half a mile away right but I I think we're gonna enjoy being out here. It's been nice just to be able to sit out on the picnic table and make a video and not have to worry and just kind of Definitely. relax and everything. But I guess we're about an hour in. Yeah, right? and everybody seems to be getting off. We'll talk to you later, Robert. Thanks yep. so much for stopping in. So I think we'll end this little video, uh, the live stream update. Yeah, I'll uh, drop Sheldon one more yeah, time one so more you time. can see him. Tomorrow <laughs> see him. I will probably make a video of of uh, New, uh, New Orleans Mardi Gras, and I'll put a little something in the front of it. And that way you'll know that this was before all of this craziness happened. But we're going to just kind of make those videos in order and just do them. And I hope you watch them and I hope you enjoy them. And I hope you understand that this was all before this and that we are safe and that we kind of just run a little delay. But that's okay. We film more than I like to edit. So we like filming and doing more than I like editing and uploading. And thank you guys so much for coming on here because we appreciate all of you. And we love this interaction we get to do with you guys on these lives. So we really appreciate you coming on here and, and supporting our travels and everything we do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks a lot. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and Instagram. More content on Patreon. Have you done any posts on Patreon lately? I think you have, haven't you? Lots of stuff. So extra videos and all kinds of stuff. So, But thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Yep. Thanks for watching. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Set that little X up there. Mm-hmm. Be done. All right. See you guys. Thanks for watching.